So it's been about six months since I made a video and I uh, haven't really just been working on businesses and other stuff. It hasn't been anything really interesting. Uh, so I've decided I'm, I'm working on a project right now and I thought it would be interesting to post. And uh, just as I've come out here, my neighbor across the road has decided he's going to come out and trim weeds with his Fisher Price weed eater. So hopefully you don't hear that with my microphone here. But the um, project we're working on today is installing a eight foot tall metal deer fence like the one behind me. Uh, this is what I put up last year and it's a eight foot uh, knotted wire uh, in black and everything's metal, all the posts are metal uh, and the fence obviously is metal. This does a great job to keep out deer but you have to go all the way around. So I put in I think we've got about a 120 foot run here on this side and basically we're working on running across the front of my property and then the final step to that will be building a uh, as it's currently conceived a somewhat elaborate gate for my uh, to gate off the driveway that'll be power and it'll be all metal and I think that's also going to be somewhere in the seven to eight foot tall range and I'm you know thinking about building it all out of steel and turning the parts on the lathe and welding everything up and then uh, having a combination of wood and uh, or a combination of metal and using Ipe uh, boards as a uh, kind of to finish it off in a nice way so uh, that's what we're going to be working on mainly this video is just going to be putting uh, putting in the posts for the metal fence showing off my uh, auger that I use on my tractor and uh, and basic idea of what we're doing here Okay, so here's where we're working. We've got, uh, I came in with the backhoe and got this started and then cut this road going across basically so that we can access. I think I showed in a previous video where we'd cleared off this hill and I buried a water line and stuff under there. So we've got our first, first post in and I went through and cut a level path down through here because I need to be able to get down there with the tractor both to cut both to drill the uh, drill the post holes and then I have this contraption I built for putting up metal fencing that uh, I'll show in the show in part two of this video that makes it a, you know really easy to roll this stuff out and tension it using the uh, using the loader on the tractor so this is all perfectly you know smoothed out I use the power rake on the on the tractor and got this all leveled out but we've got this all built up and I've got my line strung showing where so I can get my holes marked where I need to do that so this is about I think this is about 200 and 250 feet maybe down down this way I ended up having to get another roll of wire to complete what I'm trying to do but we basically got down here and I used all the dirt from coming back, brought it all down, got this area all built up. I might have posted, well I haven't posted it yet, but an Instagram picture of I almost, my tractor started sinking in coming off this edge, but we've got this built up pretty high. So I'm gonna have to, gonna have to sink a sono tube down in this corner since this is all fill going down here but we're running back you can see right there next to where that I've got another post in that's where it's going to dog leg back to this point and then we're going to turn and go up this hill and I've got these I put in 120 of these Leland Cypress all around the property and we're going to run um, kind of behind that Leland Cypress that's right there and keep going um, down that way until we run out of wire but this will keep uh, this should keep the deer out. That's the main goal here, is to uh, make it so that we can have a have a garden and grow green beans and sweet potatoes and all those things that the deer love to eat. So uh, I've got my apple trees to the point where the deer can't really kill them off. But this is the next stage of being able to grow hostas and have ornamental stuff. So once this all gets in, I'm going to plant a. Uh, a flowering vine either like the one that I was standing that fence that I was standing in front of I've got a vine that I've put on there that it's uh, it's an evergreen and it, it flowers has a nice yellow flower on, on the spring in the spring 
I can't remember the name of it. I feel like it starts with a V, but uh, I can't remember the name of it at this at the time. But I'm looking at doing a. Uh, uh, again, I can't remember the name of it, but on here it won't be an evergreen, but it puts out these great big flowers. And kind of my idea, they have progressive. I think it has a progressive color, like you can buy like maybe from blue to red and combinations in between. And I had an idea about kind of doing a tricky thing going down and maybe patterns or something, but um, we'll see how all that goes. But at this point, just showing off, we got, uh, like I said, I started out with the backhoe, got it level, and then cut most of this with the loader. And I'll show you, I've got, uh, let me go ahead and pause this. So if I haven't showed this off already, this is my, the loader on my John Deere 2032R, and I've got what they call a piranha bar on the front of it. So once I got it started, I was able to, oh, more noise. This is not a very heavily trafficked road, so it's not normally very loud, but my goodness. Um, so uh, we we're able to come through and that does a good job of cutting. And then I've got my, one of my auger bits there for my post hole. My post hole auger is hydraulic and fits on the loader, but we're gonna show that in a minute. And then I showed another, I don't know if I actually posted a video with that. It might've just been on Instagram. Um, I do have an Instagram account under the same name. If you guys wanna keep up with that, I have a lot easier time of maintaining that and post other random stuff on there. But um, this is my uh, John Deere power rake and it does an amazing job. It, uh, you can take something that's completely torn up and, and make it perfectly level and basically a single pass. And I've got it set up now where the one side is set lower than the other side so that it would level out that hill so we can run across there and it just kind of pushed. If I wanted to disconnect the loader, I, should, I can hook up the hydraulics on there and, and tilt the angle on this thing and it would have done it quicker, but it's kind of a hassle. I don't have a separate remote on this, so. I have to take the loader bucket off and disable, you know, one of the one of the controls and hook it up to the back and do all that. So I just went ahead and did it this way. But I will have to disconnect that because I run the I run the hydraulics on the auger bit off of basically my dump control, um, my dump curl control on the uh, on the loader. But I'm going to go ahead and get that hooked up and we'll show you how that system works. So we've got a lot of stuff here that uh, isn't, I guess, normal for a tractor in this size. Uh, first, this is a Artillion fork bar. You may have seen me use it. I've got forks that go with it normally. So this piece is, is an amazing part for somebody like myself who's got five trailers and has them in weird places. This is essentially a, a two inch receiver bracket that mounts to the loader and you can move it and pin it in different spots and it makes because the tractor can basically move the front end sideways because it can turn so tight you can really get trailers in and out of places and with a double axle trailer you can lift the front tires off the ground and uh, and not scrub it when you're really trying to turn tight um, but i've got trailers everywhere and it makes it real easy to just come in and not, you don't have to mess with jacks you just come in and lift under and pick it up and and move them around so Great piece of equipment, but what I did, this is a um, this is a Land Pride HD25 uh, hydraulic post hole digger, and this is meant to be bucket mounted using this plate. You just mount it on the side of your bucket. Obviously, that's for a much larger tractor. Uh, this thing probably weighs, if I had to guess, it's probably in the hundred plus pound range. Yeah, it's got to be over 100 pounds, just lifting it in to, to pick it up and, and put it on there. Um, 
so having it hanging off the side of the tractor and everything it would you could probably do it but because you've got everything up so high it's kind of precarious so especially if you got the weight of the loader bucket up high and then you got the weight of this thing it's sketchy enough with with just this on it if you get on any kind of incline which is why i put so much time into making that uh making that road i just showed as level as possible because when you've got the auger bit on here you kind of have to drive with it up in the air um, the great things about this is if you ever used a, a pto driven um, post hole digger you don't have you don't really have reverse you don't have a lot of a whole lot of speed control um, and if you live in an area with rocks you can really get into get into a headache pretty quickly so this is Obviously, it's a full hydraulic, and I hook it up to the, the dump control, you know, dump curl control on the loader. So I can just, you know, control it from side to side as far as forward or reverse. And then I've still got the up and down with the loader. So that actually allows me to put down pressure on the, uh, on the bit, which you normally can't do with a, with a three-point on a, on a tractor this size. I, I think bigger tractors have, a, have down pressure on their three-points, but this is all, you know, normally in this size, they're all just gravity. So having that set up is really, really nice. Um, some of the downfalls of this, you can't see as easily exactly where you're going. Like if I have this centered up, you can't, you can't see where the bit is. If you've got a second person kind of spotting you, um, that, would, that would work well. But because I've got this bracket, I just slid it over. And so basically I've got, I, I welded a piece of, I uh, just took an old receiver hitch and cut the two inch section off and made an adapter so that this plugs into where my, my hitch normally goes. So I can use the same bracket. And, uh, and if I take these pins out, I can slide this. I gotta take the weight off of it, but I can slide this from one side to the other. If I got into a situation where I could only get the tractor in one side or the other, you know, it works great for that kind of thing. Plus you got plenty of force that you can, you know, if you got a rock stuck in a hole, you can, you can sit there and pull it out. This tractor from a, uh, a flow rate standpoint can, is barely rated to drive this thing. I mean, these are, these are meant for, you know, large field tractors or skid steers that have, you know, high, high flow rates, but it works fine. I mean, it, it doesn't turn it crazy fast, but at the same time, it, it does a good job. Um, I've got a three inch, a three inch, a nine inch, and then something like a, it might be a 20 inch auger. It's a great big thing. Um, and if I had to do it over again, I probably wouldn't have bought the, uh, what did I say? Three, I have a six, a nine, and then like a 20. And the six, doesn't work all that well in our soil, but I, I think the problem is that that center shaft in that auger um, outside, you know, your, your distance from that, the center tube section on your flutes is a lot, it, the center section is basically, the center cylinder is the same regardless of what size you buy. So when you get to that six inch one, the flutes aren't very wide and I feel like it, it has trouble with rocks and stuff like that, that it doesn't, doesn't seem to want to pull them out reason I bought that was uh, um, we were putting in actually these metal posts at a we did a big job uh, one of my companies did a uh, did a job where we put in a whole bunch of this deer fencing that we're actually putting up now and because that we're putting in I don't know those posts might be two inches uh, we didn't need a great big hole so bought that other auger and it worked fine for that and you probably save on concrete whatever um, but as far as making holes quickly, the nine inch works a lot, works great. Um, it, uh, you're gonna use a little bit of extra concrete, but really when you're, if you set a wider pad down in the hole and then you backfill it with dirt, how much difference is it really gonna make? Um, in fact, it may even be, may even be better. Uh, but, and I got that big one with the idea that, hey, if I ever was planting, uh, planting a whole bunch of bushes or something, and I've used it to plant, you know, some some trees and bushes and stuff, you can basically make a big hole with that uh, with that auger pretty quickly. It does kind of, if you're in a high clay soil, it kind of galls the hole, and uh, you may not get the best 
best penetration with your plant roots after that. Uh, you know, the ones I did with it seemed to work fine, but we're fairly sandy in most of the, the topsoil on this lot. But again, this is, you know, real versatile and it's got plenty of force to even to drive that great big 20 inch or whatever it is auger. And uh, so I, I, it was the best solution for me. This is more expensive than a PTO. I want to say with all the bits and everything, I might have, you know, it's somewhere between two and three thousand bucks, I think, for for everything. Um, and I'd really like to get, you know, it's on my list of one thousand projects, to get a hydraulic connection up here in the front. As it is currently, I've got the the John Deere accessory outputs on the very back, and basically I have to disconnect the loader and then reconnect on the side. And and uh, so I've got these kind of ridiculously long hoses that I string across all the way to the back and and that gives me my hydraulic connection. So let me go ahead and get this rigged up and we'll make a hole. So I've got the auger installed. I went ahead and put the ballast box on the back since it weighs it's about 800 pounds in there. Uh, weighs a lot more than the power rake and it doesn't swing around as much. So less likely to hit on a tree and more stable. I've got some of my rear wheel weights on Normally, if I was doing a bunch of these, I would put uh, put the other, I got another 60 pounds, 65 pounds I can put on each side. But just to have his weight down as low as possible, because anytime you're having to drive around with the loader that high with, you know, weight and you're on hills and, you know, kind of precarious situation, it's better to be safe than sorry. Uh, so I've got my hydraulic hoses run down here across the loader. They sort of tuck in okay here. I'm not saying that this is a great solution. Um, and you know, running them between the pedals, obviously completely unsafe. And back here on the back, I've got my accessory connection plugged in, and then I've disconnected this mess. This is a factory John Deere solution to having outputs on the back, is you've got all these extra connections and you just kind of flip them around here. It is a disaster. Um, I've got an elaborate idea on how to solve it, and I've just never followed through on getting all the hoses made and everything. And, you know, projects. So uh, anyway, that's what we've got right now. So when I go to either side, it will go forward reverse on the auger and we're going to go ahead and make a One more thing I was thinking about while I was driving down here with the tractor. I This video is in no way condoning running with one shear pin in that's loose and not having this guard on here. But I this thing turns you're going to see how slow this thing turns at full speed there's nobody standing here to get their arm caught in anything so i leave it off to make it easier to switch bits and having one pin in there is more than fine for the amount of flow that this thing puts out uh you know if you're running you know a, a bobcat or something that's i don't know what those things are 25 gallons a minute or whatever but uh um they'll turn a lot faster but with the flow rate we're pushing on this thing it it turns real slow but it does a great job of making holes and so that's what we're going to do And just to show you, adjusting the idle doesn't really do, I mean it goes a little bit faster, but even if you take it all the way up, it doesn't really increase the flow rate. What I do make sure is that I've got it set so that I'm on the curl function, because these have some kind of relief in the dump function that I don't know, if you look up floppy bucket syndrome or something, it, that applies to that. But I think it would, I think there's some kind of freewheeling in the, in the other direction that would, might get in your way when you're trying to put pressure on this thing. But we're digging through this, this is all fill. I don't know that I'm gonna be able to get deep enough. This is, this is sandy and I've packed it down and it's been wet and I've packed it down so. Hopefully, we can get a good post set in here. And you'll see the corner brace that I'm putting in 
has uh, has these legs on it that that will support it from from both directions. And I, from this angle, I can't really tell if I'm making a super straight hole, but I'm putting a uh, three inch pipe in a nine inch hole. So you got plenty of room for air as long, plenty of room to compensate for that as long as you get it halfway close. But as you can see, I can lift, I can put a lot of down pressure on that front end. And in a situation where you really, uh, really need to get through something hard. That can really be a big asset. I don't think I'm gonna make it. They make an extension for these. This would be like the one time when it would be nice. But then you got to get it so high up off the ground. I don't know that that would really, would really work. Normally, I wouldn't drill this deep of a hole, but since this is all backfill, I figure by the time I put 100 plus pounds of concrete in this hole, it uh, should work out. But we're going to be tensioning the fence coming off of this point. So it's kind of important that it's that it gets a good good solid base. We got it pretty well cleared out. But you can see that bit. I mean, it doesn't turn real fast, but I mean, I'm not out here setting any records, so. But for a compact tractor, if you're uh, if you're in an area that has rocks and and you know you don't want to get bound up with a PTO, this is this is the only way to go. I think this is the smallest hydraulic one um, hydraulic one available. Kubota dealerships sell the uh, sell the Land Pride brand, so any Kubota dealer would have it. Um, uh, what's the? There's that place out of North Carolina that sells a bunch of implements. They've got one, but it's bigger, and I think it's more. It's a higher flow rate, and it's more expensive. I want to say that this uh, this HD25 is the smallest that you can buy. Um, go up. To, I'm gonna grab the camera and take you up and show you that big that big auger bit just to give you an idea on that. So we've got all the auger bit stuff in one video. Show you the hole I made there. Not too bad. Again, we're, we're still in fill going down to there, which is sort of ridiculous, but we're really, the way I'll do it is I'll tension. I'll probably, I have to pull it to that, that post that's right there. You can just see, right there that black post going up um, i'll tension it to that point and then it'll have to dog leg off the other other way but this has got a got a leg that kind of will come in at an angle so you'll have your main post going up and then you'll have a you'll have a post going off at an angle that then sits into another concrete point and then another one that comes back towards where i'm standing and it'll be sitting in another pad of concrete so let's go up and take a look at that other auger bit Okay, so this is that great big one. Doesn't say on it how big it is, but I said it's somewhere between 18 and 20 inches. It's a pretty good size. And then this is that little one. You can see I'm talking about that this distance, you know, it really just doesn't doesn't pull stuff out of the hole that well and, and that can cause it not to feed real well in something where you've got, you know, rocks or roots or something like that. This is, this is some of that fence left over from doing that other side. So just to give you an idea what we're working with, 
somewhere. My collection of junk. In the next video or one of the videos in this series, we'll be showing off this contraption and what it's actually for. Um, it's pretty neat. I, I sort of copied a few other way more expensive commercial things that, uh, that I had seen and made this, uh, this tensioner and roller for, the, uh, for putting out that, that tall wire. Each one of those rolls, I think, weighs about 400 pounds. They come in a eight foot, haul, eight foot tall, 330 uh, foot long section. So it's a it's a bear. I don't I don't think as many people as you could get to stand around it could actually unroll it. I mean maybe you could, but it would be a fight. And then you still got to tension it. But we'll go ahead and get the get that post in, and then I may do just showing in the same video, just getting getting the rest of the posts in. But we're gonna work on that, and then I'll show putting up the fence in the following video.